Welcome to the Positive Pants Podcast. Mindset, motivation, and inspiration to help you find your positive pants. Let go of negative thinking and stop living for the weekend with your host, Fran Excel. Welcome to the show. As always, it's Fran Excel Mindset Coach helping you find your very own pair of positive pants so you can get out of your own way and live a life that you love. So I am fresh back from the Youpreneur Summit and it was awesome. Definitely go next year if you can. So while I was there, it kind of prompted me to want to revisit something that is a little bit of a bugbear for me. Obviously, being mindset... <laughs> knowing what can really throw people off and out of whack and all of those sorts of things. This is one of the biggest that I see. So the question I'm asking today is, can you really make six figures in six months in an online business? I'm going to get a little bit blunt and ranty in this one because I feel really compelled to talk about this because it is a really, really big issue if you're an online entrepreneur. I've been in the online space for a little while now and what I'm currently seeing makes me a little bit sad and makes me a little bit mad. There are certain messages that are repeatedly put out there and served to us in daily ads on Facebook, Instagram, all these things that quite simply preys on people's vulnerabilities. It preys on people's fears and it's causing them to make bad decisions and absolutely cripple their self-esteem. In many cases, it's actually making people quit altogether because they don't feel good enough. They don't feel worthy. They question why it's happening for everyone else and why not me? What's wrong with me? You know, let me know if any of this sounds familiar. Insert picture in front of the Eiffel Tower, sipping champagne and a pair of Chanel Sunnies and Louboutin shoes. Cute strap line. Six months ago, I only dreamed of this being my reality and now it is. I can show you the exact steps I took in my business to quit my corporate job and make six figures in just six months. Or this, insert similar picture, but maybe this time on, I don't know, a luxury yacht. Are you an entrepreneur or a wantrepreneur? You need to get out of your corporate job right now and go all in or you'll simply never get there. You don't have a business. So there are a few things wrong with both of these scenarios and they are all too common. So I'll begin at the beginning and tackle the first one. We are being bombarded with statements of six figures in six months every single day. The problem is, the first problem is, this is not everybody's goal. And if it's not your goal, you shouldn't be made to feel bad about it. Whoever kicked this one off, I would lo honestly love to give a good firm shake. <laughs> so what's the main issue with it? The main issue with it is it absolutely shames anyone earning less figure, less than six figures in their business. It makes people feel less than, which is freaking ridiculous, because if you know the amount of people who would never back themselves to even try, even if you've made £10 in your business, it's a win, yeah? The majority of the people in the country, and I'm in the UK, if you haven't guessed from the accent, <laughs> The majority of people in the country aren't earning six figures and above. The average salary in the UK in uh, 2017 was 26,500. Okay. And if that, and if six figures wasn't a goal in your job, why does it have to be in your business? I mean, it's all possible to get to the six figures. There's no glass ceiling. You can go as far as you go. But if that's not your goal, that's okay. If your business makes enough to sustain you and pay the bills, that is a freaking spectacular achievement whether it's 10k 30k or 100k the thing i want to get across is do not let anybody else's benchmarks get in the way of you doing your thing or make you feel anything less than incredible just for backing yourself like i said plenty of people wouldn't it's become this sort of badge of honor that simply didn't exist before as if anything under a hundred thousand pounds is just not good enough and that is certainly not the case. The next thing wrong with this picture is the sheer amount of people claiming it that aren't actually doing it. It's insane. You really, really have to do your due diligence on this one. If it looks too good to be true, it usually is. There are people in the online space who have integrity and cut out the BS, nearly saw, didn't, 
don't worry iTunes, look for them. There are plenty of them. The reality is that six figures in six months is achievable. It absolutely is. If you're already established, have an audience and a product or service. Don't get me wrong, there are magical unicorns out there who have done it. But the part that the majority of people are missing out is tends to be the year or more of hustling that went before it and audience building and crafting your offer and honing in your niche and pivoting. I mean, I pivoted, honestly, so many times. Now, I'm, I'm, my ideal customer is still the same person, but they're a couple of steps further ahead than they were when I started. OK, so again, you're being given a totally unrealistic benchmark and it is breeding horrendous self-doubt when people don't hit it. Please try and remember that you never see the whole picture and trust your gut. Trust your sleazometer because it's usually right. There is also an element of allowing people to believe what they want. Hang on. So did your business make six figures gross total net profit? Did you pay yourself that as a salary? All very, very, very different numbers. You set your goals, not the industry. And please, please watch out for the exact steps. Again, do your due diligence. I followed so many of these exact steps that either aren't relevant for me, where I'm at, or my business, or they're from so far ago. Like if someone built an audience of thousands, but it was back in 2015, or even to be fair, 2017, let's get honest about this, when algorithms were totally different, GDPR wasn't a thing, Facebook wasn't pay to play, and organic growth was far easier. No, I don't necessarily think all of those things are a bad thing because I think it means that you build audiences that are more um, engaged and more the right audience, you know. But what's happening is you're benching yourself against an unrealistic goal here. So the goalposts were moved, which is fine. We adapt and we move and we learn. But the reality is it is much harder today than it was even a year ago. And when your audience isn't growing as fast as other people's claim they did, it really does make you question your own self-worth, your ability, and makes you second guess yourself. And it is so easy to quit when you feel this way. And I just really don't want that for you. You absolutely can do it. It's all there right in front of you. But it takes time, work, and the right mindset to get you there. The next thing I kind of want to talk about is this all this job bashing that goes on as well. The sense that if you're still in a nine to five job, that you aren't really an entrepreneur or a business owner, that it's a dirty little secret that means you're not as good as everybody else. And here's the thing with that. It's total BS. Absolute BS. There are more people today with side hustles than ever before. It is known to be a big thing like kudos to have a job and have a side hustle. More people than ever before are creating extra income streams into their lives without leaving their 95. The average millionaire has seven income streams. So what if one of those is a job? As long as you can do it, awesome. There are more corporate jobs being replaced by artificial intelligence than ever before. Who's going to come out on top? Having a job while you build your business can be one of the most sensible things that you can do. Yeah, and here's why. You can invest in yourself. Hooray! <laughs> you have the income to invest in business setup, the right learning, the right development, the right team members, support, networks, coaches. The list goes on. The pressure's off. I see time and time again people taking on clients, and this is the danger. They take on clients who were clearly not right for them. And then people, they're being burned for thousands of pounds because they couldn't turn away the money. But the other great thing is you can get a mortgage. That's why I did. So the reality is, if you just quit without knowing your cover for at least a little while, you are hugely likely to go straight into scarcity and lack mode, which is exactly what happened in my first business. The fear center in your brain will go crazy. You will, you will not make the best decisions for you. And often it will stop you in your tracks. And let me tell you for free, cue some serious stress. I know. I've done it once before and it wasn't pretty and it made me quit. Yeah, there was all the mindset gremlins, but a huge part of that was the fear around money. So what's my point here? It is genuinely time to stop listening to and measuring yourself against other people's opinions and against totally unrealistic goals. Your self-worth and ability is not 
tied to other people's opinions. It's tied to yours. You really can do and have it all. There is absolutely no shame in having a job if that's where you're at and no shame in not hitting six figures yet. It's about being realistic, realistic and sensible with your time, your risks, your investment and your expectation. We're all in different situations and we all have different lives and different things going on behind the scenes. So forget what people are saying you should do and the way you should be. And the next person that says to me, if you don't have this, you don't have a business. And some of my friends do say that. And that's cool. That's their opinion. This is mine. Stop making people feel small. You absolutely can and will do this. I can help you navigate all these inevitable mindset gremlins if you want me to. All you need to do is book in a call. You don't have to do this on your own, but please don't give up because you have got this. When I was at Upreneur, the next thing I want to really quickly talk about is in the realm of other people's opinions. I was sat with a lovely lady and she does follow me online. So absolutely no disrespect is, is meant from this. But she said something to me in, in a mastermind round table that threw me a little bit because I was kind of taken aback. And what she said was, well, to be honest, Frank, you're going to have to work so much harder than other people to be taken seriously because of your age and how you look. I was a little taken aback by that. I mean, thank you very much. I will take the compliment. She thought I was at least five years younger than I actually am. So I'll take that. But the thing that ups, not upset me, that's not the word I'm looking for, that threw me slightly is the fact that you say that to the wrong person and that person will instantly feel small. That person will have, feel like they have to change themselves. And the interesting thing was, is earlier on in the conversa conversation, somebody was talking about how they felt the opposite. They felt how they had a unique appearance and that meant that other people wouldn't want to watch them on video. And what I said to them is your uniqueness is your superpower. Who you are is your superpower. Now, I know how easy it is to listen to people's opinions. I really do. I get it. But things like that can really throw you. It threw me in the conversation and then everyone was coming up to me afterwards going, I totally don't agree with that. And I really do mean no disrespect about that at all but it's important to be aware that what you say to people can affect them and if I need to dumb myself down or tone myself down or be anyone other than myself to be taken seriously in my business and for people to know that I know what I'm talking about then I don't want to work with that person and that's cool so I want you to know that if anyone has ever said anything like that to you See you next week. Bye.